Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig. You know, the great thing about Macintosh computers is you don't have to know too much about how they work to get work done. But sometimes it can be very useful to understand some basic things like how your file system is organized. Let's go take a look at that on this episode of MacMost Now. Okay, so most Macs are set up with the Macintosh hard drive being called Macintosh HD. And on that hard drive are usually at least four main folders. You have your Applications folder, your Library folder, your System folder, and your Users folder. Now your applications are exactly what you think they would be. If you look at it, it's all the applications when you're used to seeing. Maybe you usually hit the Applications tab over here on the left. But this is where they are stored at the main level in an Applications folder. Now the second folder is usually the Library folder. And this is stuff your system needs to keep it running. A lot of the stuff you don't have to mess with. You can find like the caches for your browser, that type of thing. One thing you may have to look into every once in a while is your fonts folder. Now a font book will handle managing all your fonts, but in case you want to know where they are for backing up or something, that's where they are. And there's a lot of other different things in here as well, most of which you'll never have to deal with unless you're a power user. System folder is exactly what you think. It's the folder that holds all the stuff that keeps your operating system going. It's Mac OS X. Now this is where everything really is. It's the Users folder. In the Users folder you've got a folder for each user. In this case we've got MacMost and we have the account we created for a few episodes ago when we were doing something on parental controls, Account for Timmy. Now we also have a Share folder and this will be where files that are shared between all users are kept. So if you're logged in as your user, say MacMost in this case, this is what you'll have access to. You typically won't have access to things in other users' folders. Inside this user folder in MacMost you've got a bunch of different folders you'll start to recognize. There's the folder for everything that's on your desktop. This is the same as looking at the files on your desktop except you can look at them in list format. You've got your documents folder. This is where you should be storing most of your files for you know things you create for your applications, that type of thing. We have a downloads folder which is kind of new in Leopard. And when you download something using Safari uh, it usually sticks it right in there. You also have a library folder that's specific for that user. So you find a lot of the same things you find at the system level library folder, like fonts, but these fonts would only be available to th this one user. Then you've got some special folders, movies, music, pictures. These are all things used by iLife. M movies, for instance, things created by iMovie. Music is basically everything for iTunes and also GarageBand. And pictures is everything used by iPhoto. It's where you find all of that stuff. Your public folder is something where if you put a file in it, other users can see it. And you also you have a Dropbox in there usually, which means another user can actually drop something in there. So if you're on a network and you put something in your public folder, somebody can log into your machine, but without knowing your password, they can't access anything that you've got except things in your public folder. And they can only give you a file by putting it in your Dropbox. Now you also have a sites folder. Now this is if you're going to use the file sharing capability that creates a small website, personal web sharing it's called. And this is basically a little mini website for your computer that you can access locally on your computer or if you know the IP address of your computer you can actually use your computer as a little mini web server. Now if you're on a Mac with restricted access you typically can't access anything outside of your own user folder. So basically you could have a semi-public Mac that everybody on it is not an administrator except for the one that is an administrator. So everybody else can access their own files but can't actually change the applications that are on there because the applications are at the top level. And you can't actually change some of the main system settings either. Just your local system preferences. Now if you do everything the right way, which is up to you really, you can have some interesting things going on. For instance, if everything you create, whether it's a Microsoft Word document, a Photoshop photo, uh, whatever it is, everything you create in the Documents folder, then you could simply back up all of your documents by backing up only the Documents folder. Likewise, you might also do the same thing for movies, music, and pictures. You put all your pictures in the Pictures folder, all under iPhoto. You know you can back up all of your pictures by just backing up the Pictures folder. You also know that if you need to transfer things to another machine or something, you can just use these folders. In the old days, people used to store documents inside application folders, just on the main level of the hard drive, places like that. It gets really confusing if you want to move your machine or if you need to rescue data off of a machine if the hard drive fails. Here this makes it very easy to deal with. Matter of fact, if you back up your entire user folder, you should be able to recreate your user at any machine that you want. Same thing for applications. If you go ahead and save everything at the applications level, 
you know you've got a backup of all your apps. Now, since all your apps are, should be installed by installers or install CDs or DVDs, uh, you should be able to lose your entire applications folder, simply run all the installers again, and get all your applications back. This also helps when you're searching for files under Spotlight. If your files could be anywhere in your machine, then searching for it is going to be tough. It's got to look through all the system files, all the application files. But if you know that your files are all going to be in your user folder or in your documents folder, you can just search in those specific locations and find files very quickly with Spotlight. If you work in a small group or in a small company, it could also be very useful for everybody to get together and decide how they're going to store all the files, preferably in their documents folder, movies folder, etc. This way if somebody's out and you need to access some file that they've got that's important, you know exactly where to go and look for it. So until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.